says this evidence had a big impact on the jury. Fibers, scientific, direct scientific evidence doesn't lie. It holds up under cross-examination. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 scientific advancements that solved major crimes. There is nothing that you can do to change your DNA. It is the greatest tool of identification we've ever had. For this list, we'll be looking at the most well-known scientific, forensic, or technological advancements that have helped crack tough cases. Which of these do you think is the most reliable and successful? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. DNA Phenotyping DNA phenotyping helps investigators who've collected DNA from a crime scene but don't have a suspect description or profile. Applications for law enforcement were developed by nanopharmaceutical company Parabon Nanolabs with the support of the U.S. Department of Defense. We run it through the snapshot algorithms and produce predictions about that person, things that that investigator could not have known. The person's ancestry, their eye color, the shape of their face, all of that information, and then we deliver that back to the investigator. The technology uses DNA to predict a person's physical description. It can describe characteristics like face shape, eye and hair color, and even freckling. As the program sifts through millions of pieces of genetic information, it slowly begins to build a suspect's appearance. In 2017, a profile produced by DNA phenotyping brought Sierra Bozegard's killer to justice after the case had been cold since 2009. The practice is not without controversy, however. Parabon's scientific methods have not been peer-reviewed. Police in Edmonton, Canada apologized when the sketch they released led to accusations of racial profiling. Edmonton police say it is important to note that this photo is not an exact replica of the suspect's appearance, instead a scientific approximation in which they hope will generate new leads in their investigation. Number 9. Wood Forensics The crime of the century. Nowadays, that probably means different things to different people. But in 1932, it only meant one thing the kidnapping of Charles Lindbergh Jr., son of a famous aviator. He uses a makeshift ladder to enter the infant's second floor nursery and snatches Charles Jr. from his crib. The investigation into the kidnapping and murder of Lindbergh Jr. would take years and involve law enforcement at every level. Two pieces of critical evidence would help convict Richard Hauptman of the crime. The authorities immediately investigate and the evidence is damning. Hauptman perfectly matches Dr. Condon's description of the kidnapper, and his recent transactions are dominated by 10 and $20 gold certificates. A piece of ladder found near the crime scene was closely analyzed by forensic expert Arthur Kohler. He was able to link the wood of the ladder to wood found in Hauptman's attic and tool marks on the ladder to those belonging to Hauptman. Arthur Kohler of the United States Department of Agriculture examines the ladder left at the scene of the kidnapping, allowing officials to narrow down suspects even further to those with access to specific types of wood and carpentry tools. Handwriting analysis also matched the ransom notes received by the Lindberghs to Hauptman's handwriting. Number 8. Fiber Analysis They're all around us, in the clothes we wear, the carpets we walk on, and the beds we sleep in. Fiber analysis examines the texture, color, and source of fibers found at a crime scene. When we found out there was a fiber match, we were very excited about it. It linked this killer to this victim in another way that, that um, strengthened all of the circumstantial case. This can be extremely challenging when looking at ordinary clothes or other mass-produced items. The number and type of fibers recovered from a crime scene can vary greatly. When a person wearing a sweater touches someone, fibers rub off. You can clearly see how the yellow fibers are transferred to the other person's clothing. In the 1980s, a rope fiber helped convict serial killer John Joubert, and fibers from 19 different sources helped convict murderer Wayne Williams. Those fibers, along with witness testimony, led to the arrest and indictment of Wayne Williams. Number 7. Voice Print Analysis 
Phishing emails, credit card scams, and IRS robocalls have turned the 21st century into a hotbed for identity theft. But this isn't a new problem. Just ask Howard Hughes. The business magnate was living in isolation when enterprising authors Clifford Irving and Richard Suskin attempted to sell a supposedly authorized biography of his life. Irving says the last time he saw Howard Hughes was on December 7th. Since that time, a voice purported to be that of Howard Hughes has told reporters that he doesn't know Irving and that the whole business of the so-called autobiography is a fraud. Using forged letters, the duo might have succeeded had Hughes not re-emerged to reveal the truth. Or at least, his voice did. The recluse would only communicate via phone. In the telephone news conference from the Bahamas, Hughes vehemently disclaimed the book. Voice print analysis around since World War II was used to confirm his identity. A spectrograph was used to measure the volume, intensity, pitch, and tone of his voice, confirming it was Hughes, and sending Irving and Suskind downtown. This must go down in history. I only wish I were still in the movie business because I don't remember any script as wild or as uh, stretching of the imagination. Number 6. Forensic Anthropology Lying at the intersection of anthropology and criminal investigation, forensic anthropologists primarily deal with skeletal remains. You know, the most important thing is being able to identify them, give them their name back, and return them to their loved one. They have access to a wealth of knowledge stored in the bones of crime victims. A person's gender is revealed through the pelvic bones and forehead. Age can be gleaned through one's dental status. And then, of course, we've got the teeth that we can look at to help us um, for sex and ancestry and age. Different markings on bones can describe the cause of death as well as additional trauma the body suffered. Even a person's ancestry can be told through their skeleton. Forensic anthropologists often give voice to those who have long since lost theirs. Their assistance identifying 22 of John Wayne Gacy's victims helped secure the notorious serial killer's conviction. By the time the case went to trial, police had managed to identify the remains of 22 of the victims. Number 5. Crime Scene Analysis or Reconstruction Every police procedural or true crime fan knows one indelible fact. Most criminal investigations start at the scene of the crime. This stopped being about my curiosity the minute we found a human tooth. We are now investigating a possible homicide. Investigators and crime scene technicians will take photos and videos and collect any physical evidence they find. They also evaluate the scene as a whole filling in the missing puzzle pieces and making sense of all the evidence. Take the case of Jeffrey McDonald. On February 17, 1970, Jeffrey McDonald claims he was knocked unconscious by intruders. He says he awoke to find the bloody aftermath of a crime that cries out for justice. The army doctor alleged that he was the only survivor of a random attack that left his wife and daughters dead. However, forensic evidence conflicted with his account. A reconstruction of the scene allowed investigators to piece together what really happened. McDonald had killed his family and faked evidence to the contrary. He was convicted and sentenced for their murders. When they said guilty, the world stopped. All I remember was trying to keep my knees straight so I didn't fall. Number 4. Forensic Ballistics One of the most famous forensic technologies thanks to shows like CSI, forensic ballistics is essentially the study of bullets, firearms, and other weapons. It can provide information on the type of gun used in a crime. The main aim of ballistics analysis is to connect bullets fired at a crime scene to the specific weapon they came from. When we're at a crime scene tasked to determine if we have ballistic trajectories or if we have ballistic damage there. The presence of a bullet, especially a bullet that's been damaged, could help us in figuring out whether that damage was created by a bullet or from some other means. This is possible thanks to unique marks or striations left on a bullet during firing. 
It helped solve the 1961 murder of taxi driver John Orner. While the initial ballistics test was inconclusive, a test based on more recent methods resulted in the conviction of Edward Freeberger in 2002. Many countries now have national databases to keep track of ballistics evidence and link crimes and weapons. Each old casing now a part of the database of firearm fingerprints for comparison. It allows us to take all of our collaborative efforts and to identify, investigate, and incarcerate the trigger puller. Number three, genetic genealogy. In 2003, scientists successfully completed the Human Genome Project, mapping and sequencing most of our genes. The dawn of the new millennium, the human genome, the DNA code that makes us who we are, was mapped. This discovery would open the floodgates of genomics and genealogical testing. Nowadays, people are capable of finding long-lost relatives, learning about their history, or solving crimes. In California, the identity of the Golden State Killer had eluded authorities for years. California maintains the third largest DNA database in the world, but investigators got no hits for the Golden State Killer. It seemed he had managed to even elude technology. That is, until FBI investigators sent DNA left behind by the killer to a personal genomics website. This led them to several of his distant relatives and helped them construct a very intricate family tree. From there, it was short work to identify and apprehend the man who had terrorized the state for many years. Technology was D'Angelo's downfall. The Golden State Killer's genetic profile had been plugged into the genealogical website GEDmatch.com, and it returned a link to genetic material stored there by one of D'Angelo's relatives. Number 2. Fingerprint Analysis Machine Gun Kelly, no, not the rapper, was a famous bootlegger born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1900. Aside from bootlegging, he was also involved in kidnapping. His final victim was Ohio oil tycoon Charles F. Urschel, whom he kept blindfolded in a farmhouse. The afternoon of July 23rd, the kidnappers arrived at the Shannon farm. Urschel was kept in this garage until after dark. Here you see the farm home of Armand Shannon, son of R.G. Shannon, to which Urschel was transferred Monday night. This would end up being a big mistake. Urschel paid close attention to sounds around him and left fingerprints on everything he could. One of the clever things which Urschel did and which later aided in the conviction of the kidnappers was to leave his fingerprints wherever possible. These swirl-shaped impressions are formed by raised skin layers on your fingers. Everyone has a unique set of fingerprints, even identical twins, and they never change. Once Urschel was safe and sound, the noises he remembered allowed FBI to locate the farmhouse and his fingerprints confirmed that he'd been there. The kidnappers did not reckon with the intelligence of their victim and the thoroughness of the United States Bureau of Investigation. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. DNA Analysis DNA is the instruction manual for how we're all built. We share 60% of it with bananas and 99% with chimpanzees, but every person still has their own unique DNA profile. Codes for all of our genetic traits, the vast majority, over 99% of our DNA is actually identical. The part that isn't, uh, the variations in the DNA sequence, is actually what determines uh, our individuality and our individual traits. Used in forensic investigations in the U.S. since the 1980s, DNA has helped put some of the most notorious criminals behind bars. Let's say he turns out to be a 4 and an 8, because the blood on the shirt at Marker X is a 3 and a 6, and he can't contribute what he doesn't have. We know that this suspect did not leave the blood on the shirt. Samuel Little, who would confess to 93 murders, 60 of them confirmed, was captured and convicted using DNA found on two of his victims. In September 2012, Little was arrested in a homeless shelter in Kentucky on an outstanding California drug charge. When he was extradited back to LA, investigators such as Detective Mitzi Roberts were able to link Little's DNA to material left at crime scenes in the 1980s. It's also played a key role in exonerating people who have been falsely convicted of crimes. 